It's getting to you, isn't it? I know it's getting to me, but uh, um, today, after twiddling my thumbs a little bit, I remember down in the bottom of the, there's like a green area just next to the apartment. I ran out and grabbed some flowers and uh, some dandelion seeds. You know, dandelion seeds, those things that you pick as a kid and pfft, blow them and all the seeds go everywhere. I th it's something that I've always wanted to have a go at, but never really had the chance until now. Uh, so today we're going to be photographing dandelion seeds. Now it is a bit uh, intensive with regards to the, the equipment or the technique as it were. At the end of the day it's just macro uh, and I'm going to be stacking shots because of the closeness with which we're working. The depth of field as well is minuscule so uh, the only decent way to get a good shot is to stack. So it, uh, I'm going to be shooting everything as per normal on my Canon EOS 5DSR. Uh, to that I've got fitted the Lauer 60mm um, f2.8 2 to 1, which means 2 to 1 macro ratio. Um, the ability to replicate or to magnify to a maximum of twice life size on the imaging sensor. So when I'm working with something as small as water drops, a lens that allows you to magnify that to the full potential, awesome source. So that's what I'm going to be using. Um, I'm also going to be using syringes and all the other stuff to put all the put all the uh, set the scene as it were. Um, but uh, let's get into it, and I'll show you some of the some of the equipment I'm going to be using. And one of the things is a magnifying glass. You need it if, like me. Your eyes are starting to go a bit weird. 40 plus years or 25 plus years looking through a camera lens, things start to get a little bit tired after a while. But uh, without further ado, let's crack into it and uh, get on with some macro photography. <laughs> it's a wet job. Um, you're gonna. I've got a, a, a big tub of water here, okay, and a little. It's sitting inside a bowl, so if there is any spillage, hopefully it won't go anywhere other than in the plastic receptacle, all right? Um, now, we're fortunate to live in some uh, farmed areas. Uh, there's some farmed fields around us. So there's quite a lot of flowers hanging around. I went out this morning and just got a few uh, cuts of flowers, okay? Some nice yellow ones, orange one. Uh, we've got this one here, which is called a Cosmo. And you can see it's really nice. It's got purple with a, a yellow interior there. So that'll be really nice for backgrounds. Uh, and because we are going to be shooting backgrounds uh, with a very low or very wide aperture, sorry, um, the background should be really nice and blurred. And with these colors, hopefully it's going to look awesome. Okay, some of the other gear we're going to be using, um, grips, something for holding uh, the seeds on at the end of the day. And uh, if you look very carefully, we probably can't see it because we're in wide angle at the moment, but I do actually have a seed on this particular uh, grip right here. But I'll, I'll put on a macro lens in a short while and film a lot of this on B-roll so you'll be able to see exactly what it is I'm using. Okay, different delivery methods of water. We've got some water here. Um, a cake syringe, okay, something for doing icing uh, designs or whatever. It's got a nice little needle on it. so that will help us to deliver one droplet at a time. Okay, also a just a regular spray bottle. Okay, just a misty spray bottle. Um, for the macro photographer, this is also useful if you want to go out shooting bugs early in the morning. Um, and whilst they may have some dew on them, just a couple of squirts of this, and that will create a nice dewy mist that can go over an insect. And if you're far enough away from it, it will rest on the insect without bothering the insect too much. And then when you get in nice and close, you get some really nice uh, droplets um, on said insect or, or on your subject. A bit like this here. Crazy beans, that was shot in a park in Yokohama, Japan cool beans. Um, okay, now regular water is not very viscous. It doesn't have a lot of um, durability and so it can wash away quite quickly. 
or drop away quite quickly. So I've got this, which is a xanthan thickener. Uh, it actually turns the water to be more like as if it's got glucose in it, okay? Uh, and uh, sorry, gelatin, not glucose, uh, gelatin. So it makes it a little bit um, thicker. So it will stiffen up the consistency, but retain the clarity. All right, so I'm just gonna put, I've got some here, okay? I'm gonna put some of that in there and uh, that will hopefully allow us to get really nice thick uh, water bubbles uh, on water droplets on our dandelion seeds okay um, so I'm gonna go out oh, and if your eyes are failing you <laughs> a little um, a little uh, magnifying glass just to help you with the, the fine placement okay and that should be good to go um, I'm going to get this chair out of the way because it is obtruding uh, all of the rest of the gear coming in and I'll also get some uh, BTS stuff of the flowers that I'm using and the uh, all of the gear that we've got here okay so I'm going to go and get set up and in the meantime check out the BTS Okay, well, as you can see, it's quite a fiddly affair. Uh, and just while I was lining up the other shot, um, putting in a, a water droplet onto the um, seed uh, that was in place, uh, the purple flower started wilting quite heavily. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna realign everything put it with this uh, nice yellow flower that we've got here and uh, try again. Um, Looking at, as you saw in the video footage, the depth of field is absolutely minuscule. So in order to get a really nice image, what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to end up focus stacking. Uh, and that just means taking three shots, one at the back of the water drop, one in the middle and one at the front, and then just stacking them all together. Okay. Um, in order to do that, I've introduced another piece of gear, which is the Velbon slider, which is just underneath the camera here. Uh, and all it is, is, is a, it's a carriage that allows me to turn or to advance and, and uh, retract the camera um, on the Z axis. So that's forward and backward axis. Um, just a very, very tiny increments just by turning a, a small lever that's on the carriage that holds the camera. So let's go ahead and try and get the shot before this flower also decides to wilt on us. I've got one of the dandelion heads, which has seen better days. Um, but it's got about three or four seeds sticking out the top of it um, and I, with the yellow flower in the background I've managed to get quite a nice sized water drop right in the top of one of the uh, seeds so probably about a three or four shot stack let's see if we can get this I'm doing it using just constant um, LED lighting uh, no flash um, my Shutter speed is one sixth of a second. I am at uh, f5.6 and ISO 400. So, fingers crossed, let's get a couple of these shots and we should be good to go. Now, as you've heard, I've also got a two second timer going so that once I've touched the camera, I let go and it's got enough time just to calm down so there's no vibration on the camera. I could also lock the, um, wind, the curtain up if I wanted to. I'm not going to bother with that. I think the movement is minuscule. Um, because we're in a studio environment, also there's no wind, uh, etc., that's going to be acting on the subject. So I think the um, vibration from the curtain is going to be absolutely minimum. Yippee! Okay, well here we are in, here we are in Photoshop. And uh, from here, I've already created a um, folder and imported the seven of those last images that we had with the water droplet on the seed. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and do a focus stack. It's very super easy, super quick uh, here in Photoshop, uh, but just to show you how that all comes together, 
Here we go, we go File, Automate, and Photo Merge. Okay, uh, down here it says Blend Images Together. Unclick that, go to Browse, and locate the images that you wish to stack. It's going to be those ones there. And when they're all loaded, you simply press OK. And then Photoshop is going to do its magic. It's going to bring those images in. Now, what I have done, just to, again, help speed this thing up, is I have um, created these files. I exported them from Lightroom as JPEGs, uh, 72 DPI, with a long side of 2048 pixels. So as you can see, it's already processed those seven images. And all I need to do now is come over to here, edit, auto blend layers, hit stack images, seamless tones and controls, press OK, let Photoshop do its magic. It may take a short while, uh, but what it's going to do now, it's going to take each one of the focused elements from each one of those images and put it all into one finished image. Okay. So we just have to wait a short while for that. Finally, okay, here we are. So Photoshop has worked its magic. It has now created an image with all of this, the um, focused elements aligned. And you can actually see that the reason why you've got this um, disrupted border around the outside is that as we move the uh, focus slider forward, uh, what's going to happen is there is going to be a slight change to the uh, uh, to the boundaries and to the parameters of the image, okay. And in order to align all of the elements in the image of, from each one of those frames, the the border has to change a little bit. And so, you what you have to do now, in order to eliminate that, is quite simply go over to here, merge visible layers. And what you'll notice, uh, yeah, down here, for example, you've got this little pinch. Uh, I don't know why that happens, but it does. But anyway, from here, we go ahead and we just crop the image, take out the bits that we don't want. Okay, and we'll come all the way. Maybe I want to get some of that head in it. Okay, we can always clone that out anyway, a bit later on. Maybe, okay, and okay, let's go ahead and crop that image crop and there we are there is our photograph and all we need to do now is just save that to wherever we want to save it or make any changes that we deem fit let's go ahead and just save 2048 48 mm -mm 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 -mm. okay 72 awesome Cool beans, and uh, I'm happy with that. So that is our focus stack done. Let me just go ahead and change and save that. Master stack. Uh, we're going to just keep it JPEG because it was just down and dirty, quick and easy. One megabyte, simple. And I'm just going to go and reset my desktop from today's shoot. Awesome source. And there we go. Nice new desktop image. Everyone's happy. Nice and yellow, nice and sunny. Ooh, I wish it was sunny outside. I guess that's uh, one good thing. It's hammering it down with rain at the moment here in Okinawa, so it's better to be indoors anyway. But uh, there you go. A little bit, a very quick video. Um, I didn't go through too much of the uh, edit, but if you do want to see how to do a, a, a focus stack, uh, so there you go. A little bit of an edit as well at the end there, uh, just to show you how simple it is and how very quick it is to, to be able to do a, um, a focus stack using Photoshop. Um, and so that's it for now. I uh, just want to say, as always, I very much appreciate your patronage here on uh, YouTube. Uh, very big appreciation for all of you. Um, please do stay safe, stay healthy, stay distant, uh, but not from the channel. And if you haven't already subscribed, please do so. Also hit that notification bell and you'll be updated as and when new content is available from yours truly. But until the next time, folks, I will catch up with you soon. Be good. Take care. Bye bye. Goodbye. Ugh.